going on, guys? All right. Uh, Willie P., let's kick it off with you. Long time no speak, Jalen. Hope everything's going all right with you. I'm good over yourself. I'm good. Um, your service has been a topic of positive discussion in terms of the couple of balls you have set up for goals here recently. How much of that is something you've worked on during the off season and uh, I guess continually through the start of this season? Yeah, I mean, that was like one of the areas that um, I really wanted to focus on in the off season because I think it's a big part of my game to kind of have that ability to also defend the main priority, but also kind of get in the attack as well. So my kind of like training criteria kind of in the off season was like, look, I am going to have to do both sides of the ball as well. And, and for me as well, like I was a forward growing, like growing up all throughout my childhood. Um, and then obviously became a defender. So like, I still have that aspect of my hunger to be in the attacking half and want to contribute to either assists or goals. So um, it was a main I guess, area I wanted to focus on. And I mean, as of right now, it's been, I guess, a huge threat um, to the opposition. So um, you just got to keep going with that and go from there. In terms of the way Christian uses his fullbacks, you know, the, the pinched in nature of what happens, how much of a challenge is it to try to, you know, know where you're supposed to be in any given moment, especially in the buildup and making sure that you're not vulnerable on the outside to counterattacks the other way? Um, yeah, it's definitely a transition for sure. I mean, you know, traditional fullbacks, I guess, maybe even a couple of years ago or in the past, like you've always been taught to kind of be, you know, wide and kind of, you know, create space and kind of, you know, make the opposition, you know, stretch out a little bit. And now, um, you know, Latancio has this, you know, strategy of, you know, pinching the fullbacks in instead um, because, you know, we're a huge, you know, part of the buildup. We're a huge part of, you know, connecting the line between the back line and the midfield and even the forwards as well. So, um, you know, obviously at first it was kind of, you know, a bit iffy. I was still like kind of worried of where I was supposed to be at, but, you know, as weeks, you know, progress and progress and progress, like he's teaching us more and more and, you know, eventually we're establishing it. So, um, you know, I think obviously it's a work in progress right now, but I think, you know, down the season, we're going to be, you know, masters at it and, you know, go from there. Does it make you feel more involved, less involved, or or just is it just dif just different? Um, I I would definitely say more involved. Um, you know, because you can be kind of that you know pivot between you know the left side and the right side. When you know back in the day, it was just a fullback. You were kind of just on the right side, and that was it. Like it was the, back in the day, it was weird for you know us to go in the middle and whatnot. But now it's like you know we kind of have that freedom to you know be on the front line be the pivot in the middle and also kind of be like another six as well. So um, it's, very, it's very flexible, which is why I, I like it a lot. Thanks, man. Appreciate yeah. it. You're welcome. Carol. Hey, Jalen, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I just want to ask a little bit about um, for you personally, what it was like during that period, especially early this se season where you didn't start, didn't play. And then all of a sudden you got your chance. How did you go about handling all that? Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, everybody wants to play within a team. Everybody, you know, wants to be con like a contribution, whether if it's, you know, you're getting assists or playing 90 minutes or getting a goal. So um, obviously, it's tough for me um, as a player, and especially in the beginning, not, you know, getting the minutes I wanted. But at the same time, I can't, for me, my, my, my kind of mindset was I can't sit here and dwell and be, you know, have a bad attitude because, um, you know, that only just hurts not myself, but also it hurts the rest of the team. And I, I, that's something that for me, that's like one of my values is, you know, I want to respect the people around me, whether it's the coaches, the players and the staff, like as much as possible, because at the end of the day, that's what creates a good culture around here. That's what creates that kind of like rotation with the team. That's what brings the team together. So my kind of mindset was, you know, to push the guys in front of me, um, you know, make them better and obviously go out in the training field and, you know, because I owe it to myself, you know, to get better as well. So I can't sit there and, you know, pout and moan or whatever. But all I got to do is just keep my head up and keep working hard. And, um, you know, eventually my chance came and, you know, I think I've taken it pretty well. So um, that was just kind of my mindset throughout that whole time period. That's great. Um, and as one from one fullback to another, I just want to ask about that play where Melanda tackled Bernadeschi, you know, kind of saved, saved a shot on goal. And all you guys seem to congratulate him. How, how good was that play? How big was that? That was a huge play. I mean, like, because, I mean, that period of the game, we 
score the two goals. We're already back in the game. I mean, if he scores that goal, that kind of just like defeats all of us at that point. So, I mean, that tackle was almost like scoring a goal pretty much on the other end. I mean, that was just a big time play from him. And that's, and then there's a reason why we all went and congratulated him because like without that tackle, he possibly could have scored. And I mean, I trust George to say that as well, but there could have been a chance, but you know, obviously Melinda came in and, um, you know, blocked the shot and that was just a huge play. Thanks Jalen. You're welcome. Awesome. Let's go to John. Uh, afternoon, Jalen. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. Um, out to the West Coast now to place uh, Salt Lake. So just what are you coming off of the way you came back and got that point against Toronto? How do you think you can carry that momentum over going all the way across the country? And, and have you had a chance to look at Salt Lake? Or what do you see from them? Um, yeah, I mean, obviously we, you know, do, you know, a scouting report on, you know, each team per week. So um, our main priority is, you know, especially – you know, every week throughout the season is to try and make ourselves better first, but and at the same time, focus on the opposition of stuff that they do. Um, we have to, especially for us, we have to bring the momentum that we brought from Toronto. And I guess especially the last, you know, three games in general against Red Bulls and um, Orlando to kind of bring that same momentum, that same fight that we had uh, and bring it over to Salt Lake because, um, you know, as of right now, we're kind of in good form and we just got to keep going with that. And I think we have a good group of guys that can just keep fighting and uh, bring the momentum straight over to the West coast. You've had uh, in those three games, you mentioned you've scored five goals on four different players. I know one was an own goal against the Red Bulls. Uh, do you think that's a good sign that the there's good passing It's just the, you're executing the plays the way Christian wants you to that this, that the uh, goals have been spread out amongst all those different players. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think it's it's important for everybody to contribute. Um, and like you said, there is multiple goal scorers throughout the, you know, the last couple of games. And I think that's what's important, um, you know, especially coming from last year. Um, it's important to kind of score those goals because those those goals can change games. Um, and I think, you know, as of right now, it it's a work in progress. And, you know, I think only we can only keep getting better. Um, you know, as of right now, you can kind of see our current form and you know, we're, we're connecting those passes, you know, we're, we have the right structure and the right press. Um, now it's just about executing the chances, like all, most of the chances that we have. And, you know, especially this past game against Toronto, I mean, I think we can leave there, especially with, you know, with three points, but like I said, it's a work in progress and, you know, we're, we're going to keep working, you know, each and every week and, you know, try to get better. Also uh, with Christian out for a while, uh, what are your thoughts on the way Pablo's played in goal so far? Um, yeah, Pablo has been really good. Um, you know, he's, he's one of those guys that, you know, I wish, I always wish that, you know, he got the chance to play because I knew he'd always be ready. Um, you know, obviously we have a good group of goalkeepers. Our depth is absolutely insane. I think one of the best in the league. I mean, obviously George has gotten his chance as well and he's, you know, played lights out, you know, Pablo's came in and done really well. So, um, you know, I think our, just our, our core group of, you know, goalkeepers is really good. So, um, you know, obviously I hope that, you know, they keep getting better and push each other to, to the limits. Great. Best of luck on Saturday. Thank you. Thanks, John. Let's go to Brian, and then we'll go to Mike after that. Hey, Jalen, how are you doing today? I'm good. How about yourself? Good, man. Good. Um, so you, uh, it seemed like y'all had your hands full, especially on, on your on your right-hand side with Jonathan Nassario and Lorea this past week. Lorea's pace uh, seemed to be – uh, quite tricky to, to handle at times. Uh, how was it like kind of uh, dealing with both of those, those players on, on your hands, on your side? Um, I mean, I think it was fine. I mean, to be fair, I, if I'm being honest, I really didn't think they did that much. I mean, I think especially, I mean, the first half, I mean, I think the win kind of helped him a little bit with kind of momentum and, you know, either passes were way faster or shots or whatever. So, um, you know, I mean, I think especially on that right side with me and Camille, I think we did pretty well. And then obviously when Vinny came in, um, you know, we did a good job in the second half. So, um, you know, I think we, I think we did pretty well. I think we handled them pretty well and, you know, we were, we were solid defensively as well. Yeah. And then, uh, so looking ahead to RSL, I mean, they've had a pretty rough stretch of games, four straight losses and then back to back four nil defeats. Um, does that do you do you, do you all as players kind of feel like there's a little bit of blood in the water when they, when you kind of come up against these teams that are kind of going through rough stretches of form? Or do you try to keep every game kind of even keel just week after week, take games as they come? Um, yeah, no, I think we take games as they come. I mean, like especially with this league. I mean, 
this league is all about, you know, it's just like it, it, there's any game is can be any result. There's not like, you know, a bot like any team at the bottom can be a team at the top. Like there's no like, um, I guess different like different teams that you know are you know way better than others. I mean, we I mean they might come out and they might have, play a good game and they've have a bad form as of right now. And um, you know, we just have to go in every game knowing that you know they're they're coming to they're coming to beat us as well. So we have to you know go into that game knowing that we want three points and that's all we need. Um, because if we kind of go there knowing their form, we take it lightly. I mean, they could be deadly, especially against us. Um, and th- th- I mean, they're a good team as well. Like we have to make sure that, you know, we're looking out for their, you know, their good guys or whatever, and, um, kind of go from there. So we just got to go in there and get three points. Yeah. And speaking of some of their, uh, their key players are, are their, their key, uh, key leaders on the team. And you've got Andrew Brody and Justin Miram on, on that kind of have been playing on your side of the field. Uh, and what have you seen from them so far this year? And kind of what do, what are some of your your uh, key focuses and like kind of uh, getting forward against uh, their left back and Andrew Brody, and then also kind of dealing with Justin Miram on uh, when he tries to attack you on, on your side of the field? Um, I mean, yeah. So I, I've I've had quite a history with, with those guys as well. Like with me playing at Sporting, on being the Western Conference, I've I've played them quite a good amount of times, and um, you know, I know those players pretty well, so. Um, I kind of know their, their tendencies a little bit and, you know, especially, you know, going through our scouting report, we know that, um, that we can have an opportunity, especially on the counterattack to, um, get numbers up and, um, obviously press them as well. As long as we're not giving them time and space, especially when they have the ball. Um, I think that's where us as a team at Charlotte FC, where we're deadly, we can, once we get, pick the ball off them, we can counter pretty quick because we have the guys up front that can score goals as well. So. Um, it's just about, you know, not giving time and space and, you know, kind of get them on the counterattack a little bit. Yeah. And it seemed, uh, sorry, one last, one last question. And I'll, I'll be done, but you, you mentioned the, the counterattack and it does seem like y'all's press, especially at picking off turnovers in the opposition's half has been something that y'all really excelled at, but it just hasn't quite led to, led to too many, uh, shots and too many goals yet. What is it you, you think it kind of takes to get that sort of that whole complete sequence happening from getting the turnover to leading to a shot and leading to the, those goals coming in on the counter attack. Um, yeah. So that's one of the things that, you know, we go to the training ground and we practice yeah. on, I mean, it's, it's still a work in progress because it's a lot of, I guess not changes, but a lot of changes in, you know, the modern game. So it's, it's us kind of as players to try to figure out like solutions on the field, like, all right, we picked this ball off. Like, you know, what's the best option is like, you know, is the other side open or is it down the middle? Like it's just different stuff like that, that we work on in training that, you know, hopefully we kind of execute, um, you know, on the field. And like I said, it's a work in progress. So, I mean, I think now, now it might not seem like we will, we are right now, but I think eventually down the line, we're going to be scoring goals left and right. So I'm, I'm pretty excited to see how that goes. Thank you, Jalen. Yep. Thank you. Go to Mike. Good afternoon, Jalen. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good, man. Hey, uh, after the game, Camille said that uh, the draw against Toronto tasted better for you guys than for them because of the fact that you guys trailed by two at the half. What did that second half, did that second half really show you guys what you are capable of, or was it more of a byproduct of the conditions that they Toronto had the wind in the first half and was able to execute a little bit easier, and then you guys had it in the second half and, and were able to convert? Yeah, I think I think a majority of it is like Camille said, like kind of our fight. That's that's what we're capable of as a team. And I think if we kind of translated what we did in the second half to the first half, like I said, we can leave that game like winning like five two at the end of the day. But I think part of it also as well was the win. I mean, both their goals were offset pieces that you know, especially with their corners in Toronto with the wind, it was like going like a hundred miles an hour. So it was like it was pretty hard to defend. I mean, it's something that we can't you know really control at the end of the day, but um you know it's it's one of those things but like Camille said it was it's kind of just our fight of you know what you know what we did with our back against the wall and we came back and got you know two goals and we got a point out of it so I mean in the same time we could what they're left there with three so um you know we're just getting better and better and I think our fight just getting better as well so hopefully you know we can come with more games more wins was that uh was, I mean you guys have gotten points now in the last three games after the 0-3 start, are you noticing that everything is starting to to come into place easier and, and it's more 
read and react as opposed to think, then do it. I mean, are you guys getting more and more comfortable in the system as you've gone up? Uh, 100%. I mean, I, I think you can ask any guy um, now compared to, I guess, maybe the first couple games, you know, do we understand the system? And like I said, it's still like it's still that work in progress, but it's that's like what, you know, we're starting to get that structure now. We're starting to get, you know, how do we balance, you know, our movements compared to other guys? How are we possessing? Like what's like the play style and stuff like that. And, you know, I think we're understanding it really, really well now. And now we're just like kind of re repeating it during training every single week. And the more we repeat it, the more that we're, you know, we're getting better at it. So, um, you know, like, like I said, I'm excited to see, you know, how we keep playing down the road and I think we can only just get better. It's going to sound like a really silly question here, but when things are feeling like that, I mean, how does the fun level go like through the roof for you guys that it's, it's, it feels second nature. And now you just, you're just going out there and playing. Oh no, for sure. I mean, I think now that once we got it, now it's just kind of like, all right, now we're kind of flexible with what passes we're making, what kind of plays we're making. And, and now that we got the structure down, it's about, you know, as players, like how are we going to create solutions? How are we going to create chances? And that's, and that's the best part about it is knowing now we, now we know the structure now we know how to move. Now it's about how we're, how we're, how we're going to score those goals. And now once we figure out how to score those goals, I think we could be one of the best teams in the league. All right. Thanks very much. Yeah, thank you. All right, let's finish with Caleb. Hey, what's up, Jalen? Good to see you. Good to see you as well. Uh, just a quick question about um about Lata something that Latanjo always stresses is mental fortitude, mental resilience. Uh, you guys have now earned four points in three away matches this season, and that took you all the way to July last year to do. Um, how has the kind of mentality of the team shifted this year? How has that sort of fortitude shifted this year? For y'all um yeah i mean i think one um bringing on andrea that's kind of like the head of you know kind of like mental performance um you know i i think he's had a big impact on us you know kind of seeing a different perspective of how we go to those away games and how we approach those because i feel like previously we approached those away games and it was kind of like oh like we have an away game like you know whatever and not everyone was on the same page and now i feel like this year he's put a perspective in our away games and it's like you know we have to go in there wanting to be you know, he calls it hunters. We want to go in there and we want to be the ones that are hunting for three points instead of being like the prey and like kind of sitting back a little bit. And I think that's what's changed all of our mentalities is like, you know, now we go out to away games and we're like, you know, this is it. Like we're, we're the hunters in here. Like we're coming in to get three points and get out. You know what I mean? So um, I think that's one, he's had a big impact on how we kind of see that. And I think two um, is kind of just, especially as players, you know, we've came together and, you know, we're fighting for each other this year. And like, I feel like this year, it's just like one big family. That's just, you know, the chemistry is getting stronger and stronger. Um, you know, so hopefully we can kind of get more, you know, points on the road. I think, I think, I think that's so important for us as well. That's fascinating. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Yeah. Good luck this right. weekend. Thank you. Excellent. Thanks everyone. Well, uh, we'll end it there. Um, just a quick uh, time updates. Uh, Christian Latanzio's press conference tomorrow will be at 11 a.m. rather than 10.30 a.m. A little 30-minute delay there. Um, so just 11 a.m. We'll have that time update in the release as well. So thanks, everyone. Tomorrow or Thursday? Thursday. Yeah, thanks, Mike. Good, ca thanks. good catch. <laughs> so it's Thursday, it's Thursday at 11? Thursday at 11. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Will.